In this video, we're going to take a look at the new accordion widget in the all-new Adobe Captivate 12.5. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, by all means, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your e-learning buddies. So the all-new Adobe Captivate has released an update. We're on 12.5 now. Uh, full disclosure, I'm using a pre-release version just to get this video done ahead of time but it should be very close to what you see in the actual version that you're probably downloading right now from the Adobe website. But the coolest thing here is this new accordion widget, and I think that's a great addition. A couple of things really stand out, and I'll try to highlight those as we go through this uh, tutorial today. So let's take a look at Captivate here. Okay, to add the new accordion widget in the all new Adobe Captivate 12.5 update, you just need to click on the add new widget icon in your left hand toolbar and you'll see a new thumbnail for accordion widget. We'll select that. Now starting at the top, you've got everything kind of default right now, but uh, you can do several things with the alignment and spacing. For example, if the rest of your project is, let's say a content width of 80%, you can override the default with that. The other thing that's kind of nice here is within the actual accordion elements themselves, you have the ability to adjust the content spacing. So I can drag this to the left to make it a little bit tighter, or if you want a little bit more white space or, or empty space, you can drag it all the way to the right here. The number of accordion elements is next. You can override the default of two with whatever value you want, right up to a total of 20. I probably will never use 20, but it's nice to know that that flexibility is there. Scrolling down on the Properties Inspector a little bit, you can see the next are the components that are available to either turn on or off for this widget. Uh, starting with the overall widget components, such as title, body, instruction, and of course your previous and next buttons, you can turn off as well. The reason you might want to turn those off is, let's say you're, you're creating a long scrolling e-learning course, where there's going to be content before and after this on the very same slide that users will scroll up and scroll down to. Therefore, no need for previous and next buttons. I'm going to leave them on in this case. I will say that you can adjust the alignment of several of these components as well. So the title can be centered or right aligned. Same thing with body and instruction as well. The next set of components are specifically for the accordion elements themselves. So if you decide you don't want an image, you certainly can turn that off. Uh, however, if you've got an image, keep it on, of course. There's a heading and a subheading. I find the accordion element itself kind of acts as a heading or a subheading, if you will. So I'm going to turn these off. I'm not going to need them in the example I'm using today. I do wish to add a background image to this accordion element. So to help my content stand out a little bit, I am going to turn on the card component, which will create an outline around my text here. Let's start to put my content in before I make further changes here. Starting off with the title, which I'll place at the top here. Next, I have uh, some introductory text I want to include. The first accordion will be about dressing appropriately for winter. The second one is related to driving. The third one is going to be avoiding frostbite and hypothermia. And it's important in winter to stay informed, listen to those weather reports. So I've updated that as well. So starting with the top here, I've got some content for each of these. So I'll copy and paste the text for the first element here. Under Drive Safely, I've got some other text for that. And avoiding frostbite and hypothermia, we'll do this. And for Stay Informed, I've got some text for that as well. So a couple of things with the accordion elements themselves. What's kind of cool is that you've got this little expand icon here. And you can turn that on or off if you see fit. 
Um, the other thing about it is that if you go back to the normal mode, you can even change that icon and replace it with any other SVG and it'll automatically do sort of the flip effect for you. Um, and of course, you can, uh, you can apply that to each of these accordion elements. Each of these accordion elements, by the way, is a multi-state object. So if you click on the accordion element itself and click on show, you'll see that there's a hover state, a visited state, and a disabled state. And if you don't wish to use these, you certainly can right click and disable those. I'm going to keep the hover effect and the normal effect for these here. So let's just disable visited and disabled and that way you can truly customize how your accordion widget behaves okay i'm going to click away from that to close that and we're going to scroll down a little bit further and talk a little bit about the appearance section and here's where you can change how your accordion widget looks starting with the background fill uh, you can change that from a solid color fill which is the default to one of the two styles of gradients or an image fill. I'm gonna choose image in this case here and navigate to where I happen to have an image that I'm intending to use for the background. We'll bring that in. Now it's a little bit contrasty here, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna lower the opacity of this so it appears lighter. And I'm gonna add a bit of a blur effect so it's clear that that's just the background. The next tab in appearance is for content and you can change this solid fill background to something else as well. We could use the same image we just selected. You could use one of the two gradients. Uh, in my case here, I'm gonna choose image and I'm gonna navigate and I'm just gonna pick one of the uh, other images that I'm planning for this. And like before, we can also you know, lower the uh, opacity of this and maybe blur it out or maybe a bit more in this case here. So there's something in the background we don't exactly know what at this point here. And that's going to be applied to all of them. You can select this background one by one and change those individually. So if you wanted to use, let's say I've got the dress appropriate image as the background here. Here I can go in and select a different background. So in this case here, this is the winter driving one. And we can do the same thing for the avoid uh, frostbite here. So select that. And we'll just go to system here and choose uh, similar images as to what I'm going to put in the placeholder here. Lastly, let's do the stay informed. Click the folder icon and we'll just get that stay informed graphic that I have in mind here. Okay, starting at the top here, let's put in the image that I intend to use for this here. So I can literally drag this image from where I have it on my computer. Double clicking the image will allow me to go into edit image mode and we can just change the crop so that we're seeing something that I think looks good there. We'll press save and that looks good. Let's do the drive safely image here. We'll again, just drag and drop. That looks fine hypothermia, we'll bring that image here. That looks fine as well. We could crop these differently if we wanted to, but I think they're, they're good the way they are there. Finally, let's go to the card tab within appearance here, and I can do things like uh, adjust the background of my card. So I think I'd like it to be a white background here. I don't really want to border around it. And actually, I think I would prefer it just to be uh, a little less of a rounded uh, item there. So I'm just going to put the corner radius at zero there. And that now applies to all of my cards. And again, like most things in Adobe Captivate, I could select the card itself and make individual changes, like if I wanted to have a drop shadow and that sort of thing. Okay, this looks pretty good to go here. The last thing I wanna point out is that you have settings for this particular widget and you can turn on or off the ability to move to the next slide when the widget completes. And all this does is it disables the next button until such time that all four of these items have been clicked.
Personally, I don't need it in this case, so I'm going to turn it off and allow uh, students to move forward whenever they're ready to move forward. Let's preview this and see how it looks. Okay, so we've got our four items here. I'm going to click the first one. There's the information about dressing appropriately along with the uh, logical image that goes with that. Drive safely, avoid frostbite, and stay informed. And using an accordion widget like this allows you to chunk the content into easily digestible chunks for your students, making it easier for them to comprehend what you're teaching them. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.